<clears throat> all right um <clears throat> good afternoon um i hope you're all well loreen thank you for uh setting us off um and uh, i can see the recording has started yeah i'm sorry i have had a very long day and uh, i had another session just before this so i just needed a quick break so uh welcome to the afternoon session for the women in cyber and uh i trust you've had uh you know very engaging and uh enlightening sessions uh the last two days actually three days because uh, this morning you also had another session um i hope your expectations are being met and uh, I was with you at the beginning when we launched on Monday. And uh, one of the things we shared is that um, we will be giving you a technical uh, skills, skill based training on uh, cyber threat management. And that's what you can see displayed on your screen. And this is leveraging on our partnership with Cisco. Uh, uh, USIU is uh, a, a, an academy, as you can see over here, and we're able to host instructor-led trainings. And uh, these actually lead to the career path, because, you know, with the career paths, you have a target uh, of uh, cybersecurity analysts. Uh, it's actually titled a junior cybersecurity analyst in the sense that it's uh, considered like uh, entry-level um, job role but i can tell you for sure this content is very well developed and if you take time you can actually get a lot of uh, you know insights to get you started but you can build on uh, out of passion and out of interest huh? uh, we're offering this free and uh, you will get a badge uh, a credential out of it from cisco uh, showing that you have completed this uh, course. Um, it is targeting 16 hours of self-paced learning, but I'm sure you can even end up doing more. And the other thing that is really good is that it has hands-on labs where you actually do practice the concepts instead of just learning them theoretically, all right? So uh, I invite you, if you haven't, uh, first of all, I hope you have all received the link. Is there anyone who doesn't have the link to this course and is here right now and hasn't been invited to enroll onto this course? All right, so I want to believe that everyone is. Um, I think the other thing I just want to confirm is that you're able to access this page from the email invite. It will actually load um, instructor-led class, this one. It's an instructor-led class. Uh, looks something like this. Um, it's opening. Um, as it opens, I just want to say a little bit uh, about it. So when you start, you do like a baseline knowledge check to just see where your cybersecurity knowledge is at the beginning of the course. So it actually gives you a couple of questions uh, extracted from the material itself uh, so that you can see how you perform, how you fare uh, in the different modules. And that can also give you direction on some of the modules that are that you need to pay more attention to because maybe you haven't grasped the concepts. <clears throat> the next thing you'll do is a quick introduction, which I will go through. Then you cover module one, which is on governance and compliance. Uh, then module two on network security testing. Module three on threat intelligence. Module four on endpoint vulnerability assessment. Uh, module five on risk management and security controls. Then you do a checkpoint exam that really tests a combination of, um, you know, uh, vulnerability assessment and risk management uh, questions. Then module six is on forensics, digital forensics and incidents response, DFIR. And then you do a checkpoint exam on that, and then you do your final exam. Okay. 
So just to access the course so that we can have a look at each of those in a little bit more detail. So this is meant to be a Q&A, but I just thought, let me start with an overview for the first 30 minutes, and then we can open it up to you know any area you want us to dive into. So, um, so this is an example of the knowledge check. I did it myself. Uh, an outcome actually of today could be if you haven't yet started anything, just start right now with doing the knowledge check. It has how many questions? Um, so I'm just reviewing my history. Yeah, even me, I got things wrong. Eh? So it's not at a you know, 100%, but the, it looks something like this. It tells you each of the topics, how you scored. Right. So I can already tell the risk management module gave me a little bit more challenge than let's say module four. So if I want to really benefit from this uh, topic, from this training, I need to make sure I pay a lot of attention on module five, you, you get. Um, and then it categorizes. I think I even did the thing twice because I think uh, for me, I didn't know there were going to be as many questions. So I think I ended up doing like close to 50 questions or something like that. Uh, so you can see your knowledge check. So if you haven't done, please take, take the knowledge check. Um, so the introduction, uh, I'm just giving you an overview of everything. Uh, so the network, in, sorry, the course introduction basically tells you and upload them, one of them, and there's another one which I like on my machine. And you can see a packet tracer, there's even a video <clears throat> walks you through, you know, how to set it, how to get steady. Yeah. And you even have uh, your slab. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Then moving on to module one. Uh, I think you can mute. Uh, Lori, no one is forbidden from an interview. People are free to speak. Is that the case? I'm not able to sign TV video. Are you, Lori? Probably you are breaking. Um, I'm breaking. Everyone who is always experiencing the same. Asking if you, you can monitor for me. Now do I do? Can you see my screen though? Yes. Okay, thank you for the feed for responding because then I was asking if you can unmute yourselves. So at least I know that you can. Uh, so sorry about that. I think my connection yes, is not really stable. But uh, Lorraine, kindly alert me in case you, you notice I've dropped off or something like that. Eh? Kindly, yeah. So I think what I was saying is, I'm just gonna give a quick overview and then uh, open up for Q and A. And if there's anything we you want us to particularly focus on, then we do that. Eh? So, <clears throat> so module one is on governance and compliance, and you know it gives you an overview at the beginning. One video, four labs, one one quiz. So it really touches a lot on policy governance being um, 
administered through directives uh, documented in cybersecurity policy. Uh, governance being um, the mandate of the directors and executives in an organization uh, to make sure that an organization is well run and it's compliant uh, with laws and regulations, uh, that it delivers value, the organization delivers value to its stakeholders, um, and also manages risk. Uh, risk management is one of the key components of governance. Eh? Uh, so it also touches on ethics and being able to be a person of ethics, ethical conduct. Uh, this is something that all professional bodies emphasize, and I can see Cisco has done the same. If you want to be a professional member of an association, uh, one of the things they do emphasize is being a person of integrity and conducting uh, your, uh, you know, being, a, a, you know, conducting business in the profession uh, using a, a proper code of conduct, right? Following the code of conduct. Um, there's also a section on IT uh, security management and different frameworks and the controls that are outlined in different frameworks. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what you now get when you now uh, expand the content uh, on each of these. Uh, uh, <clears throat> So you can see what is covered in uh, in governance and the video and the lab on developing policies and procedures, uh, guiding principles for HR. Uh, there's also a section on ethics and the different uh, methods of thinking through ethics, um, including the ten, con ten commandments of uh, computer ethics. They also talk about the utilitarian principles, the common good, uh, and things like that. But they also talk about laws uh, because uh, this is also about cybercrime. Cybercrime is about infringing laws. Um, so they actually do address that. And the challenge here is not just to see the laws from a Cisco perspective, American, but also see the laws international from an international perspective, but also asking yourself what the, that, that looks like even in the Kenyan context. Eh? Yeah, so a very nice uh, discussion around that. And uh, also uh, uh, IT security management, uh, the frameworks being presented are the ISO 27000, the NIST uh, uh, cybersecurity controls framework, the CIS controls, uh, the security cloud security alliance cloud, cloud controls matrix, but there are many others, right? Uh, but just to give you an understanding of the best practices in the industry. And I think this is like one of the really, really uh, important uh, groundings you can ever get is understanding, because you see, there's no need of reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Uh, a lot of work has actually gone before you in thinking through cybersecurity. And what you can do is understand, you know, some of these frameworks and what they offer. And you can, you know, customize and adapt them uh, to your context. Uh, and even there, I say, improve, uh, mix and match and improve, pick what you need from this one and the other one, and, um, you know, create something that works uh, in your organization. I know you're not hired, some of you are looking for jobs, but I can tell you that can be a very important area in an interview. Uh, some of them are not mentioned, like in the banking industry, PCI DSS is a key one for, uh, you know, uh, financial services. I, I actually want to see whether it was it is mentioned, but I, I think it is. Um, I think it is mentioned uh, somewhere in this uh, section. Um, so I really do encourage you to really get into this and make the most about, uh, out of it. Actually, PCI DSS is actually not there. So, but there are many others and we can mention them even in our interaction. All right, so module two. Module two then is about network security, two videos, one lab, a packet trace activity, check your understanding and a module quiz. It covers uh, security assessments using different tools to, uh, you know, gather network information, basically what is called uh, scanning and uh, just reconnaissance. 
uh, understanding an environment and mapping it out. Then they also talk about testing techniques, security testing techniques, testing tools, and then also uh, really get into the discussion of penetration testing. And, you know, uh, I mean, I, I listened in even from the first day and we were talking about different career uh, options. Uh, and some of you uh, would want to go on the offensive, basically like red teamers and penetration testing. Uh, but I'd also say that blue teamers, the ones who focus on protecting systems and implementing controls, also do benefit from understanding uh, where their systems are weak. All right. So this is a really good topic um, in just being able to understand how uh, security assessments are done. So, um, yeah, so you discuss the different types of assessments and there's even a, uh, an example there, a practical example. You look at different ways of uh, testing, different tools. And of course, I'm not surprised NMAP is, is one of the ones that is picked, but also different SIM tools. I remember this was mentioned in day one. Um, so it's good to also see and understand what some of these tools are and why they're important and why they're being mentioned. And also just penetration testing, uh, looking at different methodologies and how uh, penetration testing, uh, the phases of the penetration testing exercise. And um, I think here they also challenge you to uh, use different other tools, uh, in this case, like Wireshark. Eh? Um, so, you know, one of the good things, like I said, out of this training, it gets you started. If you've never heard of Wireshark or Nmap, it's a very easy, soft, uh, soft landing and entry into the understanding of these concepts. Huh? But then I also say that it's a very good place to also build on. And, you know, you can, you can branch off and say, oh, I really enjoyed this section on Wireshark and you come, let me also just show you something here on my browser. Maybe you come to YouTube and you're like, ah, this Wireshark thing was really, really good and I want something more. So you come and say Wireshark. Imagine it exists. So when you come to Wireshark Masterclass, you will of course get Chris Greer. He's a really good guy, uh, teaches a lot in terms of, uh, you know, Wireshark. And um, you also get to join the community. So There's a community. And the lesson one. Now, the important thing about Wireshark. You can see he's produced like uh, how many? 10 lesson masterclass. And very, very good, very uh, hands on. And in an hour, because if you now combine like some of these uh, short, short clips, huh? in an hour you can have a really good appreciation uh, of of uh, Wireshark way way beyond even what is covered here, right? Yeah. So uh, so that's that's the that's a module on network security. So quickly giving you an overview of threat intelligence. I can see our time is really going, but I, I know we started uh, slightly late. Uh, so this one touches on threat intelligence and it's really the title of the course, but you can see there's a lot more that you just set the, uh, the ground uh, before you build on it. Um, yeah, just understanding what threat intelligence is and the different sources of threat intelligence and looking at them um interactively so i think that's also another good thing about this training it's not just theory so they share quite a bit in terms of what's there and then point you to even the websites uh look at different reports and they even now give you a practical exercise where you literally pick a report and investigate a particular issue and they just walk you through uh through question and answer and by the end of the of the exercise, you've actually really had a good feel of how threat intelligence uh, uh, assessment and information gathering is done uh, using different sources. OK. Um, then they also talk about different threat intelligence services. These are companies that just focus on providing 
community, the community uh, with uh, threat intelligence. And what you'll tend to find is many vendors uh, have their foot in cybersecurity. So Cisco uh, started off as a uh, primarily networking company. And remember, networking carries, it's, it's an element that carries our traffic. And of course, Cisco also has security solutions for the network. But I can tell you, they've also built a team that works in collecting, um, you know, doing research and finding out what the threats are in the, you know, just the threat landscape, you know, doing like situational analysis, understanding who are the threat actors, what kind of skills and competencies and tools do they have? How are they targeting our systems? How are our customers being hacked? And what they do is when they do that research, they compile, share reports, they share real time feeds. So like, for example, if I have bought a Cisco firewall, I can subscribe to the threat intelligence feeds so that my firewall gets updates on new attacks as they happen. And my firewall can, let's say, have an updated IP address block list uh, so that if Cisco sees a certain IP address hacking its infrastructure, it can push that information to its customers through these threat intelligence feeds and its products then uh, put up defenses against that particular threat. So that's how you want to think about it. And uh, Cisco does it, Microsoft does it, because these are major IT vendors, IBM does it. But then there'll also be these companies which just focus on that regardless of the vendor, regardless of the platforms, and they're able to help you even when you get hit, when you get attacked, to do investigations and to recover. So that's, that's really uh, the, the meat of this section. And you'll be taken through different companies and you'll be talking through different techniques for sharing that threat intelligence, like automated indicator sharing, sticks, taxi, cybox, and MISP, right? So these are different ways of having this. And you can see some of them are even open source. They're developed with a, an understanding that they are working regardless of the vendor. And, you know, it's really good. It's really good training. It's really good information, very good grounding in understanding uh, these concepts. And there's even a, a lab where you can now interact with the CVEs, uh, interact with MITRE, another very important organization. Uh, MITRE has so many resources, but I know the one that you pointed out here is the attack. And attack is so rich. Um, just the same way I told you, you can just come to YouTube and say, uh, you want a Wireshark masterclass. You can also come and say, I want to learn more about attack. And you get some really good training on how attack. So let me show you this attack. So just open this lab. They point you to some MITRE resources, CVE, CWEs. Uh, they get you to do a little bit of research. And then they point you to this website. Uh, called uh, attack.mitre.org and then when you when you load it over here you get this uh, wonderful repository of uh, a framework or a mapping that helps you understand and actually a lot of research done it's a knowledge base of different threat actors and how they conduct their attacks so in the past, this would be called the cyber kill chain, the step-by-step -step, uh, phases and processes that attackers follow when they are attacking you. And um, the initial cyber kill chain was very simple, like, like think seven steps. But you'll see like this particular framework being shown here for attack at the very highest level has 14 tactics. Then under each of those tactics, you have uh, techniques. So like you'll find uh, reconnaissance has 10 different techniques for doing reconnaissance. And let's say scanning or maybe uh, phishing is one of the reconnaissance techniques. When you open phishing, uh, it gives you more information about even attackers. So like APT is the advanced persistent threat. These are groups, these are 
threat actor groups. These are criminals who do this. And what you find MITRE has done, they investigate them. So you can see here there's APT28, Scattered Spider, Zirconium. And if you want to say, ah, this, this Scattered Spider, who is this person? You just open and they have like more research about Scattered Spider. They are a native English speaking cyber criminal group. They've been there at least since 2022. And they target specific firms. So each of these groups has like a specific industry they go for, right? There are some who are really targeted at the financial services and others who are targeted at the hospitality industry, like uh, hotels and things like that. And you can see these ones target uh, CRM and BPO firms. Eh? Yeah, and they track, and of course, this is information they've given us in the public domain, but I'm sure they, they have even more. Um, but you can see, they'll even go to the extent of telling you how Scattered Spider does its uh, attacks. And they'll even give you some specific tools or commands they have observed scattered spider doing and using all right so it's very detailed uh here is a software that scattered spider uses they use black cat in packet lasagna mimi cats rock was on rat you see and if you now want to see a little bit about was on rat maybe you're like hey, this one i've never heard about again you can drill into it this is a remote access Trojan written in C++. It was last available this time. It's also sometimes called Ave Maria, you know, so just interesting stuff. So if you're bored, I mean, you can really spend a whole day just, you know, uh, learning and uh, getting to understand what the threat landscape looks like. And just a few more comments on this is, um, You'll find that uh, the attack framework has been used a lot by uh, cybersecurity professionals to, um, first of all, know how they are likely to be attacked. And in fact, red teams take the, this knowledge base and craft targeted attacks. But it's also a platform for, um, can I say, benchmarking and you know, getting organizations to just talk and share ideas. Um, because the technique that was on rat will use on you will just be just a little bit modified and then replicated on another victim. So, you know, it's, it's good for us even as, uh, because I want to believe that the reason why we're doing this training is we're growing a community of ethical security professionals is to also create those uh, platforms for knowledge sharing and, um, and 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 you know collaboration uh, in the industry. That's what strengthens security across border. Yeah? yeah. So these are very interesting uh, resource, very good topic that I really encourage you to spend a lot of time. And it really is the the core threat intelligence. That's the that's the title of the training. Yeah. But it's not just the threat intelligence. It's also the management. So we're going to get into assessments and risk management. So module four is on vulnerability assessment. And this particular module will now delve a little bit more into the CVS, CVE, CVSS that you mentioned previously. And they'll take you through um, understanding network and server profiling, the common vulnerability and scoring system and how it works. This is an international standard that helps us communicate the severity of, uh, of, of, of vulnerabilities or weaknesses on our system okay so that uh, we can sometimes we need to prioritize we have a whole list of issues that we need to deal with when do we know this one is like top on the list and this one is probably somewhere there right uh, it's being able to understand these uh, tools like the cvss score and what really it means when you have a cvss score of nine right what does a cvss score of nine mean critical right uh, what does a CVSS score for mean, you know? Yeah. So it's very, very important, critical, high, medium, low, and informational. So it's like a five point scale. Uh, and it and it even tells you how each of them is calculated, eh? 
how do you arrive at that score and you can even customize that score to be able to contextualize it to your environment to your organization so that when you're reporting you're reporting within context uh yeah very good topic on risk management as module five and risk management really talks a lot about talking the language of business and governance because everything said and done you really need to package your understanding cyber security knowledge and understanding into a way the business will be able to consume it and be able to relate and understand so you can see in this particular module uh, it discusses risk management this being a mandate of the governance body in an organization the board of directors usually will have um, uh, a part a committee that really follows up on risk um, so it will take you through what risk management is um, how you calculate risks both quantitatively and qualitatively and then how you mitigate risks by using security controls and there's a lot of reference to the security control frameworks you covered in module one now what you're doing is looking at issues and making decisions in fact the labs uh, in this section, if I could pick the risk assessment lab here, you are given scenarios. Yeah. You're given some scenarios to evaluate. And, and that's what I really like about the training. So you have a scenario, then you evaluate and you now consider the different calculations and then you prioritize. That, that's a very important thing. Yeah? Being able to just later on say, OK, this is the one that we will address first because it's critical, right? Yeah. All right, so uh, please have a look at that. And it ends with security controls, different types of controls, uh, whether they are technical, physical, operational, uh, logical, administrative. You know, they're just different types of controls and they serve different fu uh, functions. And the 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 Controls can be protective, deterrent, detective, corrective, recovery, compensative. Um, and you can even see different uh, ways in which you can apply the controls depending on the scenario uh, you're looking at. Yeah, so you can even see here, uh, they then later on take your risk assessments and then they bring it now into applying uh, the addressing of uh, the risks using some controls. Yeah, so then you do a checkpoint exam and then the final topic is on digital forensics. Yeah, so this particular section, two labs, four, uh, two videos, four labs, a packet tracer activity, a, a module uh, for knowledge check and quiz. And this one is very interesting. So it takes you through digital forensics and what it really means and the digital forensic process. The cyber kill chain idea that I mentioned when we're looking at attack, MITRE attack is brought here again. Also different techniques, the diamond uh, model of intrusion analysis, and also the NIST incident response framework. Uh, they are bought in to help you really understand this element of uh, forensics. Huh? So very, very good topic. Um, so if you have been really wondering about this whole thing called forensics, uh, you get a very good understanding, a very good overview of that, uh, the rules of evidence and the types of evidence, because forensics really touches on cybercrime, where there's law that has been broken and you're, you're giving your expertise in investigating uh, breaches, incidents, security incidents, and solving the puzzle, you know, what exactly happened, how did it happen, who did it, you know, and presenting evidence of that so that... Um, people can be brought to account. Uh, the, the people who are involved can be brought to account with solid evidence. So it's a really good topic, uh, evidence collection and how you do it using the order of volatility from the most volata volatile to the least volatile, uh, chain of custody, and there's a practical even around that, uh, attribution of attacks, how do how does an organization know who, who did it? Like even just similar to the APT uh, group, uh, the, the profiling of these APT groups by attack, how do they do it, right? How do they know it was on RAT and not any other uh, group? 
how do they uh, what do you what do you say how do they capture the modus operandi the fingerprint right of an attacker so attackers actually have fingerprints you can tell in fact i remember this this once i was attending the training on blockchain and everyone is asking who is this uh, satoshi nakamoto uh, what is it the blockchain <laughs> I have a feeling I've butchered that. Let me just check. Uh, it's been a while since I... Yes, Satoshi Nakamoto. Yes. So, do you guys know the story of blockchain and Bitcoin? So there's this character called Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's said to be a pseudonym. And everybody has asked, who is this Satoshi Nakamoto? Have you guys ever asked, oh, you, this is not within the realm of things you worry about? Eh? <laughs> so people now started um, attributing the character of Satoshi Nakamoto by studying the code and how the code was written. And they even argue and say they can know the coding fingerprints of different programmers. Like you can tell this code was written by this, this and this programmer based on habit, things that we do habitually. Yeah? You do it in this code base, you go do it again in another code base, and guys can say, ah, this is the hand of Satoshi Nakamoto, and Satoshi Nakamoto is so and so. And there's a whole, uh, anyway, I'm taking you guys through a rabbit hole. Uh, but uh, what I'm just basically saying is that you can find, you can profile even criminals in the cyber world uh, by using uh, their MO, their modus operandi, okay? So anyway, but this attribution is a very, attribution, attack attribution is a very thorny issue uh, in the world of cybersecurity and investigations, uh, but people have, have tried to get it right. Um, even sometimes you hear uh, people maybe, th uh, the threat sources, uh, the five eyes come up with, uh, you guys know the five eyes? Who is in the five eyes in the threat intelligence uh, community? So you hear a member of the five eye come up and give a press statement and say, we have been hacked by North Korea. Um, and by the time they come out like that, there's a reason, right? Um, because in, ideally intelligence tries to keep quiet about many things. Huh? Anyway, but uh, they, they know a lot and they try and profile a lot of these things. Uh, based on um, uh, characteristics. Even maybe I've just remembered another one. Anonymous Sudan. Do you guys remember when Anonymous Sudan became the topic that everybody discussed, right? Uh, and then people said they are not anonymous and they are not from Sudan. <laughs> yeah, so, and they used what? What did they use to profile them? So, like, even when you see MITRE discussing tools and platforms, uh, that that uh, particular groups are known for and what they tend to do is it a type of does does this group tend to do malware or does this group tend to do uh, denial of service attacks eh? yeah so you can actually get to know them even through uh, the tools and the techniques they use you can use that to profile them so there's a whole section here on different groups uh, I was just curious whether Anonymous Sudan was there, but it's not. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, let me actually see if they use another name. So you can even use the search engine. It's not there. It's me spelling this wrong. They don't know Sudan. Oh, they want to capitalize. Anyway, no results for Sudan. So I was also checking on the groups. Yeah, but a lot of those discussions, when people come up and start analyzing and say, okay, this is this is who it is, they will have tracked them even from other criminal uh, interactions. And they have an MO. Um, this is what is called the MO, the modus operandi, uh, that they can profile the at uh, attackers with. Yeah, so then uh, a little bit more on attack and then also um, 
a little bit more of the labs. Now, these particular labs then go into the Linux uh, virtual machine, which you deploy on a VM, eh? uh, like a virtual box or VMware, um, which is a good practice because in cybersecurity, we tend to use things, uh, virtual machines quite a bit. Um, yeah, and then this is the seven step uh, cyber kill chain, the initial one by Lockheed Martin, uh, but also improved over time. Uh, they also present to you the diamond model of intrusion analysis, adversary capability infrastructure and victims. So whenever you're analyzing an attack, you want to be able to analyze who the adversary was, their capabilities, their infrastructure, and who they tend to target as victims. Eh? And each of these is a very important piece in the puzzle because by understanding these details, you can thwart very sophisticated attacks easily. So uh, I, I hope you guys are following along. I'm just now concluding, um, soon enough concluding. Uh, then we discuss incidents response. It usually goes together with forensics. And uh, NIST has a very good resource again here, very good guidance that is free of charge that you can use to help you understand the incidents response life cycle. Um, and they talk about different phases, preparation, detection, analysis, containment, eradication, recovery, and post-incidents. And there's even a lab there, again, to challenge yourself on applying that knowledge to a, a security incident. And they give you very nice uh, case study that you can think through. Yeah, and then that's basically it. So just let me say a little bit about the... So each of these modules has a quiz at the end so that you will only be marked as having completed the module after doing the quiz in the module. The other thing is there are some checkpoint exams. The checkpoint exams, uh, you know, have more questions and they try and combine concepts that uh, were covered in different modules. So you can see like here, this one tries to cover uh, concepts from all these other previous modules and trying to test the skills in these areas. Um, and I think 80% is a pass mark or something like that. And then if you don't get the pass mark, you can retake it. Eh? Yeah. Um, I think the other thing is um, after the checkpoint exams is now the final exam. Now for this final exam, and by the way, I've just noticed I didn't do something, which is the course survey, and I'll have to do it. So in this final exam, you see that you have questions that you need to complete. And I just probably need to check the, the there's a place where the, it gives you the requirements for passing the exam. Uh, and I believe the requirements for passing the exam is, uh, yeah, I thought I'd finished everything. I'm surprised. Uh, so here's a requirement. So they say the final exam gives you 30 questions and you need a passing score of 70%. And once you get that passing score, you earn the Cisco badge. Now, something else, we are not providing it as an invigilated exam. You, when you're done with your modules and you want to just come and test yourself at whatever time of day or night, you just come and do your exam, finish, and you get your badge. That's it. You have also unlimited attempts. Can you see that? So if you take the exam the first time, you don't make the 70% pass mark, take it again. Take it again and again. Uh, use it as a way of also going back to review concepts that you did not understand well. Uh, again, please remember, you know, us as Kenyans, we sometimes have this thing of, I just want the certificate. I just want to certificate. Some of you guys even won't even bother going through the modules. You just jump to the exam to get the badge. Okay, fine. But what is the why? Why are we doing this? The why is that we are preparing you even for an interview. You see, like, the topics we've covered in this uh, training, let me tell you, they will get you to at least pass the most, uh, like just in terms of cybersecurity interviews. Uh, let me tell you, if you really take this course seriously, I think you will pass any technical interview for an entry level cybersecurity position. So just challenge yourself and learn because 
the why we are doing this is not anything else other than to help you unlock job opportunities and get you to put a certification you know the other thing we, we were just looking at cvs because because we also conduct cv clinics huh? uh with cyber shuja and then you find our candidates don't have any certification how are you going to compete in this cyber security uh, job uh, space without having a certification right uh, in fact, even this one, I even challenged and said, okay, fine, you might blame us as, as uh, you didn't you didn't get the email, you were not invited, but out of your own initiative, isn't there a Coursera or a Udemy certification that you can do? So this is also to just say, don't just take this to pass and get the badge, though that is very important. Uh, please also do it with the aim of... Uh, getting the knowledge and acquiring the skills on these tools yeah all right so a that has taken longer than i thought um but that's the overview and i hope this in fact uh, it's a good thing that i did that because sometimes i get questions covering different sections and now because you have a good overview of everything let me now open it for the q and a and uh i want you to lead and direct uh interactively on what help you need silence it's actually good if if, if you guys don't talk i'll end the session early i'll be very happy i've been awake since 4 a.m and I still have something small to finish before the day is done. So I will quickly end the session <laughs> if there are no questions. Hello. Hi. Um, we're asking, uh, does the course have a deadline? Does that? Do we have a deadline to maybe complete the course? Yes, yes, yes. I think it's 30th of November. Let me check that again. So you have this week. But remember, it's 16 hours, but we also don't want to leave it open for too long. If you leave op things open, people never take them seriously. I'm wondering whether I gave a week. Lorraine. Lorraine, are yes, you Pro. here? Yes, I'm here. How much time did we give this? Do, do you know? No. Let me just check. Sorry. How do I check? Uh, Let it just load. Thirtieth of November, yes, correct. So we've given you a month. Also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Well, like after the session is after we're done with this with this session, I would love to have a few minutes with you. Sorry? I'm saying mm. I, I have an issue and I, I would love to have a few minutes with you after we're done with the session. No, this is the few minutes with me right now. No, it's so speak. Yeah. I'm supposed to, um, as, um, I had called you early in the morning about uh, I don't have access to you, the other course LMS. Mm. Yeah. So how can I help? I so know. again, you know, there's a team. So Lorraine, maybe you can take Sharon's. Uh, Lorraine, you have access to the info, info account. No, it's Natasha. Natasha, Sharon okay. So, uh, so Sharon, there's a whole team. We deal with so many people. I can't do this per person, right? There's a team that does this. Huh? Okay, I so. Need and so she I think a couple of things I can just quickly just top of my mind. Yeah. If a course has already gone up to week four, it's a bit hard to start enrolling somebody afresh. Eh? But I'm really glad that you're in this particular training. No. Hmm? You see, you see, the issue was I, I, I was enrolled to the essentials course, but I, I wanted to have access, I wanted to be transferred to the advanced course, and I was given a wrong 
tracking number. So I've been writing okay, email. So what we've done, what we've done, so you've sent the email. Yeah, but it's been, I've been writing email since week one. Okay, so uh, this is what I'm saying. Yes. So number one, the issue from what I understand is you changed. So you changed. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem started. Okay, so that's where the problem started. And then we're already week four. So the two things, at least you're in this cyber threat management and you're starting from the beginning. Oh. Enrolling you midway of another one, I see already it being problematic. No, I'll but, catch up. Yep. Okay. So I'm not saying I've closed the door or anything. So I've, I've said mm -hmm. things like this I can't handle on a one on one. Okay. So I've yep. left the team and they'll try and follow up. Lorraine, kindly just talk to Nani because apparently Sharon is saying she's not been getting our responses. And I don't understand why then that would happen because we have a team behind the info, not not just one person. So you should be getting responses, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Even if it's telling somebody and say, okay, I'm sorry, uh, we're not able to do anything at this moment. Let's just respond, right? Yeah, so that's the way probably I'd, uh, I'd conclude, Sharon. That was hard. Well, so well, done, well done, Sharon. Well done yep. for joining this one, eh? Yep. Yeah. So I so, think sure you make the most of it, huh? Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. And uh, Lorraine, don't we give the, the Cyber Shuja numbers? Don't people have them? See, we have phone numbers for Cyber Shuja. People should have those numbers and not, uh, you know, the other nini. So, so Cyber Shuja has phone numbers so that you can call. Uh, and just follow up if you feel like your email has not been attended to. Yeah, so uh, uh, Lorraine and the team should be able to give you that. Huh? Okay, anything on cyber threat management? Yeah, so after this call, please don't, don't reach out to me. I have other problems. <laughs> it's okay. I think other things waiting for me to be done. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions? All right. No, so thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah? Lorraine? Did you say something? All right. So thank you, everyone. Uh, for joining. Um, it's, it was actually meant to be a Q&A interactive, but uh, because there's a silence, um, uh, there are no questions coming through. Uh, I will kindly ask that you make sure you enroll and you start your modules and complete them in the shortest time and earn your badge. And if you have any challenges, please reach out and then we'll see how we can support you. Um, in the morning, we talked about CV. Yeah, so thank you, Lorraine. Asante Sana. So Lorraine has passed on the Cyber Shuja numbers. So in the morning, we talked about CV writing. When do such a course get the system? Does it fall? When we do, okay. Does it fall under certifications? It's a certification. This one is a certification. Education is degree. Degree, diploma, you know, the traditional education programs. So this is a short course. It's a certification. Yeah. All right. So if you do not get the invite, Lorraine has posted the numbers and there's also info at cybershuja.co.ke. Yeah. Okay. Uh, assessments are locked. Let me see that. Why are you guys not talking? Ama mnafanya nini? Watu wana chat. Ama you're the generation for chats, eh? For chatting. Let me see. You know, there's a generation that uh, prefers to chat and not to talk. Uh, I do not see the modules as... Oh! The checkpoint. Okay, I've just seen that. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for alerting me. Thank you, thank you. So let me just fix that right now. 
Uh, Lorraine, just monitor for me the chat if there are other questions. I hadn't even seen the chat. Nope, this generation prefers to chat. So, I have updated. So just refresh. Please refresh and confirm that the checkpoint exams have been unlocked. I don't want anybody to be stopped from uh, completing the, the program. All right. Anything else? Lorraine, can you see anything else? <laughs> Imagine I hadn't seen your chats. Me, I was focusing on the screen. And you know, when I'm when I'm presenting, I don't see the I don't see the Teams Teams window. So today is the thirtieth of October. So all this is available for at least a month. Yep. So I think they lock those checkpoint exams just in case you're creating an invigilated environment and it's the it's the instructor who's going to make sure that the invigilated environment is open. So Magdalene, uh, kindly confirm that uh, all the modules are now uh, unlocked. Farida has said she's been helped and uh, CV writing is good. They're submitting the assignment, yes. Yesterday's session. Uh, no, so the checkpoint exams, Magdalene, take a while to reflect on your side, but I have unlocked all of them. So give it a few minutes, uh, but they should all be there. Lorraine, now do I hand it over to you or you're done? I think you're saying you'll send a link where to upload their CVs. Do you want to send it now or you'll send them on the WhatsApp so that we can end the session? Yes, so that's correct. The final exam will only, it's not locked now, but you have to do it after doing the, the you know, uh, completing the other. But I think, I don't know whether you have to, anyway, but you can check. But I've now unlocked everything. It'll just probably take a while. There's a bit of a lag. Oh, good, 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 good. All right. Thank you, ladies. Looking forward to seeing you on Friday. And I wish you a wonderful afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.